Hello Maverick Traders and welcome out to your trading room. We're getting prepped for the week upcoming which is September 16th through the 20th. As always just a reminder to make sure you follow your trading plan. Now this past week was a nice robust upside move. We definitely have been calling for a breakout above that prior high and then this week was going to be kind of a question mark as to whether that, that pressure to the upside could sustain and after we held a key level, I'll talk about that. I, I really think the market's in a good place. I think that technically uh, we're going higher, and I think there are catalysts for that. We saw that out of the ECB. They did a, an announcement where they cut rates and announced more bond buying in Europe, and all of these things are kind of fuel to the fire. So they can continue to propel markets higher. And if you notice this week, huge rotation. The big theme this week seemed to be rotation out of certain currencies and into or certain uh, assets and into others. So notice the outperformers were energy and materials. The weaker were utilities and healthcare. So the rotation we saw this week was literally a rotation out of defensive and into the most beaten down areas of the market. The things that were most heavily shorted there was a big short covering and and you might say well that's just a short covering rally it'll fade i've seen this play out before where it starts and then it just just feeds off of itself so people think well you know i'm just getting a better price and then i'll get back in and short it and they keep going and going and going we saw this in multiple years in the past where as these beaten down areas start to fuel the upside Oftentimes there's an explosive move and now that we're moving to new highs, we're literally clearing resistance. Who wants to sell? The only people that can want to sell are those that want to take profits. There's, there's going to be nobody that has a bad cost basis in terms of the broad markets. And when you're up huge like this, up 20% year to date, you might think, well, that gives the market reason to go down. It actually fuels it even more to the upside because if you're a fund manager and you're underperforming, you don't want to underperform by too much. So you want to catch up and you can't let the market run without you and so forth. So I just, there's no guarantees and I'm not so sure the market's going to explode higher. I actually think we'll maybe pull back a little bit, but I would be a buyer of dips for the foreseeable future. Um, I've been definitely uh, bullish here and I even put on a kind of an aggressive upside trade in the S&P. So we'll touch on some of those points. Markets broke out. Now we're testing that all-time high. Uh, what are some of the reasons for that? You know, sometimes you say, well, this doesn't make sense. What What's the reason? And then you get the reason after the fact. There could be tax cuts coming. There could be a resolution on the tariffs. There's certainly a softening of the tariffs, if nothing else. The ECB announcing a resumption of their bond buying program, which they had done away with. They're buying once again, $20 billion worth of bonds to drive down interest rates to try to fuel the recovery in Europe, and that helps corporations. Um, you might say, well, it's just pushing on a string. Yes, but it helps corporations. Maybe it's not really going to get the economy booming, and maybe it's just you know, a, giving more drugs to somebody that's already drugged up, to, so to speak. It's not necessarily really helping. Uh, having said that, it definitely can drive risk taking because as rates go down, it becomes less and less attractive to put money in the bond market. And the bond market's huge, trillions and trillions of dollars and way bigger than the equity market. Some of that money is going to rotate out and it's already started to do that. So the markets are suggesting, I mean, if you look at what gold has been doing, what bonds have been doing, the U.S. dollar's recent downturn, there's risk taking that started to happen in this last week and a half, two weeks time. And you have to be aware of that if nothing else. CPI met expectations. Core CPI was higher than expected. Sometimes when we talk about those, important to understand the difference. Core CPI basically strips out some of the other factors of, of inflation that are more volatile. For example, core CPI does not include energy, does not include food prices, whereas just the regular CPI does. Retail sales beat 
at 0.4 versus the 0.2 expected. We only closed one trade. It actually was a robust gainer due to the hedge. So closed for a big gain, that pins position, which we had added a stock position to. Uh, here's a trade that I added this week in SPY. It's it probably struck you as kind of odd. It, all three strike prices are out of the money. It's a ways out there in time, out to November, and it's very bullish. I priced the at the money straddle and it's not projected to get quite to 315 at the high end of the range, but I went that high. I just think that risk to reward wise, I'd love to have a trade that has a huge payoff if the markets explode higher. Again, no guarantees, but the probabilities have certainly increased. And I've been mentioning this for a little while now. I, I kind of mentioned that last week, that the probability of a big upside move has increased. I still say the same thing here, and I think we may be on the cusp of seeing that. So uh, we'll touch on some of these others as we go. Market analysis-wise, we're coming into resistance and to those all-time highs. If you look at this in terms of price action, Obviously, this area, let me draw a line here, right in here, can act as some resistance. I mean, we're basically touching the, the prior all-time highs. So markets usually respond to that, and I'd, ex I'd expect a little back and fill. I don't even know if it'll be as much as I just drew there, but a little bit of back and fill, and then likely an explosive move up and through. We might just blow through it. I mean, that's certainly a, a real possibility. Look at the S&P 500. Uh, some of you know I, I like the cup and handle. It certainly has that potential. Here's your big cup. This would be kind of a handle. So if it has what looks like kind of a nervous pullback and people get scared, I'm probably going to look at that as, oh, it's giving you a gift, a buying opportunity, and I would take it. So uh, I suspect if it pulls back in price, you might see something in the neighborhood of, if you just eyeball this chart, let me remove that, look at the size of this little range right here, and I think it gives you a good estimation as far as what it would look like over on this side. So you'd probably be, you know, a, a pullback back to around 2990, 2980 thereabouts. You know, is about all the market probably has to the downside. Uh, and again, I think that would be a gift. Here's your breakout, and it kept this level open. And I mentioned this, that I was actually a, a buyer at 2960 and just a believer that if, it, if we could hold there, then this thing would get fueling to the upside. So we bought that aggressive S&P position. I think if you get a little pullback in here, it's a gift. And I, I would look to be a buyer. The only thing that changes that is if, you know, for some reason you were kind of slicing and collapsing through there, well, then that would put me on my heels and I would say, okay, well, what's happening? You know, obviously more selling coming in and hitting the markets would be a surprise. The NASDAQ, a little bit of an underperformer, which speaks to tech, just maybe not being my favorite place to, to hide out. In fact, Cisco and some other names kind of look like more shorts than longs, but my guess is if the market, the market's not going to go without tech. So you're probably going to have a move up and through there, even if it lags some of the other sectors. And what would be the other sectors to outperform? Actually, it'd be the, the ones that are most beaten down. That's where That's the rotation that's happening right now. So energy probably has more upside. If markets are, are zooming higher, energy is going to go up more, my guess, than technology for a little period of time. Might not be the better place long term, but that's kind of how these things work in a strong market move. Volatility has definitely died down. I've thought it would die down for some time, and it has. And did I think that we would go this low and the markets would break out? I thought volatility would probably go this low. I'm actually surprised and kind of changed my my viewpoint. Now, I, I had been thinking that the markets would go through these lows, but they essentially did. Um, they didn't touch a new low, but does it really matter that they didn't go 20 points lower? This was, in essence, that next shakeout, I think. 
and it was usually you get the drop and then kind of consolidate and then there's another shoe to drop and that would be the bottom I think that's exactly what happened here it didn't actually touch new lows but the markets were on the cusp they were basically retesting those lows whereas the VIX was well off of its highs and that's kind of how I thought things would would play out where the market would bottom out so we didn't quite get the new low in the markets but close enough and away we're going to the upside with volatility moving lower uh, my thought this week a little pullback would be a gift so we'll call it a minus one pull back a little bit in price and then explode higher now if the market's doing a full-fledged cup and handle then the the big upside move you could spend this week kind of backing up I just don't think it'll spend all week going down maybe it'll go down for two days but you're probably going up and through that resistance does it happen this week well you have the FOMC meeting on Wednesday you have options expiration monthly options expiration on Friday certainly could there are some catalysts out there to get markets moving on the upside markets are breaking out you could have that kind of cup and handle but I'm I'm personally looking to buy the dips at every opportunity here in the near term the odds of that extended move have increased think about what bonds are doing what we saw in the bond market is actually aggressive selling in fact I think it was I don't know if it was a record breaking but basically re, uh, your mortgage rates increased by like 36 basis points or something like that in the past week huge move historically big move higher in mortgage rates that speaks to basically rates jumping sharply and some money coming out of bonds remember they move in opposite directions so they're selling bonds and rates are going up accordingly precious metals have kind of stalled and the US dollar has rolled over all of those speak to equities being the place that rotate is has capital rotating in and that's unlikely to be a one-week event it's likely to again continue to see money move in on the dips so it might sell off for a few days and more money comes out of bonds and into equities and I think that's your rotation and then looking around these fund managers are going boy energy's down year to date and it looks ugly let's buy that it gives us the most upside potential and so you get this weird little dynamic where the worst becomes the best and that's exactly what we saw this week so it that'll play out for a little period of time my guess uh, FOMC meeting will be your headlining event so we've got industrial production on Tuesday and Philly Fed on Wednesday but that's the big one FOMC they are likely to cut could be 50 basis points but they're expecting 25 and you know no reason for me to believe that it won't be 25 but they're gonna cut rates sector analysis you look at it utilities stalling here a little bit and it doesn't look bad in fact in my market roundup on Tuesday I talked about letter D which still looks fine so utilities basing but utilities to me are another way of trading bonds and really I'm gonna get off of this area I, I think you know could you play utilities to the upside letter D looks good but otherwise I'm just avoiding the sector and I, I don't even think you know I'm not I'm not a believer in utilities in this market because if you're gonna move to the upside utilities actually have a bond like quality to them and so with the bond market selling off I'm surprised utilities have held up as well as they have but I wonder if it's a delayed move you could even make the argument that utilities should be down more and that's that might be what they see this week in addition utilities are a relatively small piece of the S&P 500 and just not overly important to the market so uh, for me it's just kind of an avoid utilities telecom uh, looks a little better I think AT&T Verizon all of those I think you can continue to play telecom it's definitely the uh, sector that's defensive but also you know you've got dividends you've got other factors it has a little bit of a utility and, and bond like quality to it but not as much so 
out of the two I'd rather be a buyer of telecom real estate has pulled back in price I mentioned that big jump in mortgage rates we're now back to the prior resist old resistance new support zone so do we hold here this is the rotation rotation out of what was working and into what wasn't look at the week real estate straight down industrials straight up this is a perfect kind of microcosm of what you want to do which is if industrials pull back you're a buyer you know and and it has to fit your plan and obviously I'm not telling you what to do but I think in terms of rotation it's rotating out of utilities and real estate and even maybe telecom but into things that are impacted by the economy by tariffs by uh, inflation by uh, asset purchase programs where they're just fueling the economy and so forth industrials have exposure to all of that they're not a safe haven they're very sensitive to what's happening with tariffs and so on and I think that makes it a place to be so if industrials pull back I'm a buyer strongest one of the strongest performing sectors this week healthcare lagging I actually have a couple of bearish ideas in healthcare financials big rotation back in so financials looking pretty solid there consumer looks okay right up at that resistance and tech looks okay so not good not bad but you know as you kind of look at price action they're just kind of uh, back up to those resistant zones now these are areas that have really saw some some rotation materials big rotation back into materials beaten down and energy was also up for the week so you had again everything that was bad turned good and everything that was good kind of stalled out so as I go to the chart here I you know if you really look at the chart you could argue well utilities are still strong overall and you know if you're looking at long-term trends or something like that but we want to look at it more short-term in the short term industrials are outperforming and healthcare is underperforming I could even argue that utilities were over here we'll call them the Utes and over here we had something like energy and it literally rotated this week where this went that way and that went this way and now things like utilities are not going to perform as as well and things like energy are probably going to outperform for the foreseeable future so let's look at a few charts utilities letter D I mentioned this in the market roundup and I have to say if you're in it I'd be taking profits the chart looks fine it you know it's up from where we talked about buying this dip call it a gift and uh, I think take the money and run so if you're playing it my belief on the markets has just changed from where we were to where we are I don't think you want to be in this area anymore it's up a couple of bucks from that level I suspect that utilities are gonna have that rotation out so I'm a little nervous about that group telecom a little better you know a little bit better than that other area but uh, I'd still it's not my favorite area if you're going to be a buyer Verizon and AT&T still look pretty good but expect some pullbacks expect some leveling off I mean at best I'm neutral on the telecom space healthcare I'm a little more bearish on these have rallied some uh, lately over the past couple of weeks but now find themselves I mean look at Pfizer really kind of a bearish candidate it's defensive and with the elections next year and so forth healthcare is always a debate well Pfizer looks like it wants to trade lower and United Health we've rallied up but I suspect this is kind of a flag pattern or pennant formation and it's gonna break out to the downside healthcare looks rough to me again I don't want to be in the defensive areas I want to be in things like industrials now here UPS I actually took profits on a UPS trade we had a diagonal that worked really good I had targeted 120 it went right up to that 
I wish I was still, I wish I'd have just taken profit, let the short option expire and kept the long. Uh, it timed it pretty well when it dropped back. I guess I should have taken profits and then jumped right back in the next day because it pulled back and now it's working its way higher. And again, you might pull back a couple of points, but buyer of the dip in things that are industrial related. Uh, it could be deer, letter D-E. I mean, you you name a lot of things in industrials and if they're moving higher in the short term I probably want to be a buyer of the dips financials financials have been all over the map but I think they're gonna have some significant upside so Goldman Sachs big reversal from 220 all the way down now it's worked its way all the way back up it's highly unlikely that you just fall apart from here and collapse instead you might back up but it forms that handle if Goldman Sachs gives me a little pullback and we can do the math on this and say well the size of the cup the handle should be about 30 percent of the size of the cup so I'm gonna call the cup 220 minus 194 just eyeballing it and it's not a perfect science so the cup is about 26 points well what's 30 percent of 26 it's 780 so if you were to pull back from 220 by about eight dollars call it 212 you know I'm gonna call it 213 because there's a gap in here if you pull back in Goldman Sachs to around 213 I want to be a buyer that's an area where I think it's a gift my guess is it won't even pull back that far I'm not expecting that much of a pullback in markets so 215 maybe but you want to be a buyer of the dip I think consumer stocks Activision uh, EA take two these all look good we had huge bases Activision was in a sideways range for months on end it has broken out by I'm a buyer of the dips again looks great and cyclical and so forth things that are defensive just don't look as good Philip Morris this is in the consumer space but it's defensive it's cigarettes you know the old uh, consumer staple versus consumer discretionary discretionary you buy when you have excess capital right you go buy a Harley Davidson or whatever defensive you buy regardless like you're gonna buy your Colgate you're gonna buy your Clorox you're gonna buy those products regardless of how bad the economy is doing and people will drink and they'll smoke regardless of how so these are defensive doesn't matter if you're in a recession people are gonna smoke maybe they'll smoke more so here you can just see the rotation it's down it has specific news but it's also that defensive that I just don't think you want to be in so if you're trading something like MO I I see no reason to believe it's not gonna keep going lower for a while technology Western digital high beta had been beaten down big recovery these are the things that should go up versus Cisco big cap tech slower mover place that's heavily owned should continue to underperform I want the beta trades I'd much rather be long Nvidia than long you know Intel as a kind of a comparison I'd much rather own uh, if you were talking about software well I'd look at something that's more high flyer in software and think there's a lot better chance that it goes up than the big slower movers uh, the, the Microsoft's of the world I think this is a market where you want beta on the upside materials starting to recover here's Huntsman chemical chemicals being a big part of materials you can see just a huge explosive move looks great and in the energy patch still things underperforming uh, but have recovered back up you know here's a chart that if we fail sure it continues to decline but energy would be a tough place to trade because you've got a lot of overhead resistance but it's not gonna take much to really fuel some upside so industrials seem like you get a lot of the beta but you don't have 
quite as much to deal with in terms of overhead resistance and structural problems like you have in energy. But if you want the deep end of the pool, energy could be that for definitely more upside. Go into the Trader Trades area on the website, add your stock list, the things that you're trading. Uh, we love it because you're participating and we look through those trades and we want you to kind of have a community feel where you're sharing your ideas. Broad markets have gone back to those all-time highs. You might have a little pullback, a little bit of a minor dip, but I think we go higher. Five kinds of volatility. We're doing that class on Tuesday night. That's at, that's at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So come and join us if you can. Then we'll have the midweek update on Wednesday and the trading room, as always, on Friday. And we'll get that out to you. Obviously, as I have suggested, I think we, if we get a pullback, I'm a buyer of it. I think this is a bullish market environment. If you look at the rotations that are happening, everything suggests that we might be on the cusp of even more explosive movement to the upside. So if, if you're bearish, you got to be willing to kind of look at both sides of the market and say, okay, is now the time that I want to be aggressively bearish? I think you can have a little bit of a dip. If you're quick on it, you can make a little money on the downside probably early in the week because we should respond to the prior resistance and we should back off temporarily. But in the not too distant future, I think we're going zooming through there and then that could be you know, that could ignite a lot of buying pressure above those highs. So it'll catch a lot of people off sides. A lot of people that have been bearish, been calling for market collapses, for recessions, for a lot of things for a long time. And they'll have to cover those shorts and have to buy back into the markets. There's a lot of money on the sidelines and all of that can fuel more upside. So hope you've enjoyed this trading room. Everyone have a great week and we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.